I think that it's, it's clear that at one point, a lot of the society will have to embrace this change. Leaving tech supremacy with high performance chains. It's time for an introduction into the innovative ways to empower blockchains through heterogeneous architectures and high performance computation. Ciprian Pungila, University of Timisoara. Good day, everyone. What a great kickoff for the Malta International Blockchain Summit. Very good to be here. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ciprian Pungila, and I am from the Western University of Timisoara, Romania, Faculty of Mathematics and Computer Science. Today, I'm going to talk to you about one of the interests that we've developed ever since 2016, and that is an interest in high-performance heterogeneous blockchains. Because a few years ago, inspired by blockchain success, myself and Professor Dr. Viorel Negru, who is also a member of the Higher Education Council in the Ministry of Education of Romania, and also a president of the Senate, our university, have begun a research project on how blockchain technology can impact lives. And we obviously started with, uh, with the Bitcoin network, because we were very impressed about all the interest that was driven into the Bitcoin network by all of the people, of course. And that interest actually turned out to be an interesting concept that we tried to develop. And we tried to identify the main points of failure and the main points of success for the Bitcoin network. And moving forward, we took that research to the next step. It's a great honor to be here and stand in front of you and present the developments of, of those updates. Now, it's clear that the fintech industry was pretty much disrupted by the agenda of the blockchain industry. And while it's still unclear how that disruption is going to change lives or how it's going to actually change due to various legislations in various countries, I think that it's, it's clear that at one point, a lot of the society will have to embrace this change. And because our university stands among the top universities in Europe when it comes to equipment in particular, because in 2011, We've acquired one of the most powerful supercomputers in Europe, which is the IBM Blue Gene-P. It has 4,096 cores, which total about 11.7 teraflops of, of power. And they have also a cluster of Tesla GPUs. And because of that inspiration that we've had in our work in heterogeneous systems, we decided that it would be a good idea to try and apply that to blockchain as well. This is actually a picture of our own self-contained industry. Now, I strongly believe that as we move ahead with the technology of the materials, we're going to reach eventually the limits of the physics applied to computing systems. And we can obviously see that ever since 1970, we've had a pretty much strong growth of technology, which was obviously adhering to Moore's law. And that growth, of course, is directly proportional with the actual costs which are shown in this picture. But it's also clear to us that at one point, we're going to reach the limits, the boundaries of that physical performance that we can actually attain right now. And because of that, because of that limit, we have to consider what we have in our own backyard that we can use and put to good use to make sure that the technology moves forward, at least at the pace that we're trying it to make. So with that in mind, Myself have been involved with heterogeneous computing and performance computing for a long time now, a few years at least. And I have more than 25 papers published in, by various top international publishers worldwide, like Cambridge Press, ACM, Spring International, Thomson Reuters, Elsevier, Oxford University Press, and EG Global. And they're all tied to high performance computing. And as a result of that experience, we tried to come up with an idea for a heterogeneous blockchain. And that's how the idea for the white paper came to life. And that idea is actually <clears throat> present right now into our own self-developed blockchain, which we call Advanced Blockchain for Enhanced Yields, or ABAY. And the layer one of this blockchain, which is a multi-layered blockchain, is the actual cryptocurrency itself. It is a proof-of-work blockchain at this very moment. And we're building different layers of functionality on top of this actual blockchain with a few innovative concepts that we've never seen before in our research through other blockchains in the industry. Now, the design is modular. It's flexible as well. We have the five layers that we've been discussing about. And one of the first concepts that's innovative at this point is the concept of refundable transactions, because we haven't seen this before in any of the blockchains, not without proper implementation of, of its own. So in this concept, we also introduce a new type of miner, which is a mediator. And it's also 
uh, a good way to ensure that there is a fair chance that a refundable transaction happens in the correct way. And then we also have another concept which we introduced, the concept of a trusted payment gateway, which is also present in the white paper, but also most importantly, we have the concept of lending cryptocurrency. I've seen a lot of ICOs do this uh, a lot of the time, especially on the Ethereum network, but this is a native functionality that we are building inside the blockchain itself. It's forging the blockchain itself. And also, interestingly, just two days ago at the university, we had a meeting with Mihai Alisie, who is the Ethereum co-founder. We organized our own workshop event, and we talked about the future of blockchain and how it can apply to various use cases throughout the world. And while we reached a number of topics, including development of programmable blockchains, actually inspired by the Ethereum success, our blockchain is also designed to be programmable because it should support custom payment processing, smart contract development, and also transforms the eBay token, the cryptocurrency at the very level, into a utility token. And one of the top interesting things about this meeting was that it was held at our university. We have support from the Blockchain Association of Romania. We have support from the ABE Foundation, which I will talk about in a few moments, from the West University of Timisoara, Professor Dr. Viral Negru, which you can see in the picture there, and of course, Mihai Alisie, who comes from the Ethereum Foundation. The ABE blockchain is not all about building something that's probably innovative to some degree. It's also about maintaining interoperability between blockchains. I think we're one of the very first initiatives of this kind to have full academic support to ensure or try to ensure support with uh, a blockchain that's based on smart contracts like the Ethereum blockchain as well. And that's why we're also going to support the Solidity programming language in our programmable layer as well as develop our own NLP-based programming language ourselves. An interesting part about it is that throughout the development, when we saw the raise of interest from obvious investors and entrepreneurs, we found out that the growth of the actual blockchain that we have right now has been quite amazing. In just six months, we've accumulated, we've amassed more than 100,000 active wallets, which is eight times faster than the growth of Bitcoin at, this time, at the same time period, and 2.5 times faster than the growth of Ethereum in the same time period. Now, our vision for eBay is both academic and functional. That's why we've developed a number of strategic partnerships with various providers throughout the world. And here I would like to mention, of course, the West University of Timisoara. As I mentioned, we're one of the very first academic initiatives for blockchain development in the world, as we know. And then we have CyberTor Studios in Romania, another strategic partner. We have the Blockchain Association of Romania. We have APE Systems in Malta, which I will talk in a few moments about. We also have Exchange One in Malta, a cryptocurrency exchange. We have the ADX International Group of Companies with headquarters in Singapore and offices in Malaysia, Taiwan, South Korea, um, and uh, a number of other countries as well. And also we have SciTech Software from Romania at this moment. Now, in 2019, we've also established the ABE Foundation, which includes myself as a co-founder and head of research. We have Professor Viorel Negru, who is also a scientific advisor into the foundation, and we also have Mr. Philip Maria Sauerborn as a, as a legal counselor as well. And 2019 also brought the coin to our first exchange, which is Exchange that one in Malta. And for 2019, we're already in the talks and we've already initiated the application process for two more exchanges, ZBX and Huabi. Now, all the research that's going to be published is going to be a part of the top international publishers. That's our aim for 2020. And that includes Cambridge University Press, Thomson Reuters, Springer, SAVA, and of course, Oxford University Press. These are our aims for 2020 in terms of research. And we've already made our first steps towards this. We've already published a paper on the technology that we've developed, which is called Improving Blockchain Security Validation and Transaction Processing Through Heterogeneous Computing. It was published as part of the Advances in Intelligent Computing and Systems by Springer International, and it was named to be one of the most innovative papers at that conference, which is why we've also been invited to publish an extension version of it in an upcoming journal. Now, a strategic partner for us has been APE Systems in Malta. Because APE Systems in Malta is using under the booth the actual technology that we've developed as part of the ABE Foundation. And part of that technology, which is obviously focused on the blockchain, APE Systems has become a licensee of what we have done through our work. And as a result of that performance boost, the APE Systems platform can now process tens of thousands of transactions per second. Uh, which is a very big difference compared to other blockchains that are implemented in, in the same purpose. Another important step that we're doing here 
is we're trying to do an academic initiative for the raising awareness and, of course, uh, introducing students to, to our work, which is why at the same event that I talked about two days ago, we also discussed about the possibility of introducing a special class for students who are interested in learning more about blockchain technology and blo blockchain-focused focused fintech. And at the same time, we're also organizing a special session on blockchain security for the CISIS 2020 upcoming conference, which is the International Conference on Computational Intelligence and Security for Information Systems, with proceedings to be published by Springer International. And at the same time, the CINAS 2020 International Symposium on Symbolic and Numeric Algorithms for Scientific Computing, where we're going to touch base on a number of smart contracts designed for scientific purposes. All the research that's going to be published is going to be published under the ABA Foundation umbrella. And right now, the ABA blockchain is a private blockchain, which is limited. It's confined to its supporters, to its strategic partners. But early in 2020, once we figure out all the issues and we're going to ensure the full security of all trustees, we're going to make it open source and it's going to be available on GitHub. So hopefully, it will be more to talk about, especially since next week we'll also be present at another event international in Asia. I hope you have a great day today. I hope you enjoy all the presentations. Thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.